Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at a tool called Flipper Cloud, which is used for feature flags. Now, if you're not familiar with feature flags, this will effectively allow you to roll out a feature to some ar arbitrarily determined number of users or all of your users uh, over a set period of time or like a uh, uh, however you decide to roll it out basically. So let's say you want to uh, add a new nav bar to your application. You can then enable it for, let's say, 50% of your actors or users. Uh, and then half of your users would see it, half wouldn't. So it allows you to do a little bit of A-B testing in that regard. But it also allows you to roll it out so that if, let's say, you enable it for 10% of users and they say, hey, there's bugs with this, uh, you can then uh, either deactivate the feature or you can try to fix it and you don't have to worry about your entire user base being exposed to these bugs. You can sort of limit the impact of it as you roll it out over time. And it's pretty easy. It ends up just being like a simple if statement in your code, uh, but uh, it's really powerful because it gives you this neat little dashboard. Now, uh, Flipper is a paid service, but the I think they have a free tier for their cloud. It comes with like a 14 day free trial for their premium features or whatever. And I think you can probably do whatever you need to with the free tier. Uh, so the premium is just like a neat bonus. Um, but they also have, uh, where is it? If I come over to their documentation, uh, they also have a UI that you can use. I won't cover it in this video, but if you'd like to see this, uh, let me know in the comments and I can make a follow-up video. It's just a gem that allows you to set up a uh, your own version of the cloud dashboard. It doesn't look as pretty, uh, but this also allows you to toggle the feature flags without having to pay for anything. It's hosted on your own server. Uh, open source and all that other stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the cloud hosted version in this, but the setup for the other one is pretty simple. So I'll, I'll leave a link to uh, the flipper page and you can just go find it yourself. But basically the way this works is you have like your, your nav bar in this case, and you can see right here, I have this nav bar enabled for, if I come over to the, uh, not the adapter page, the flipper UI, maybe we'll just come over to here. Uh, and I'll go to my dashboard. And if I go to my dashboard, I have a nav bar feature right here. This nav bar feature is enabled for 66% of users. So you would expect one in three users to not see it. And if I come over here, you can see uh, in my three windows here, two of my users have a nav bar. And then the third one, Jane, unfortunately isn't in the, the beta test pool. So she doesn't have access to it. So we'll take a look at how to set this up and then I'll let your imagination run wild for what this would be useful for. Uh, so we'll go ahead, we'll get started by seeding out of here and doing a Rails new video. For this, I'm gonna be using dash J ES build dash C bootstrap. And then I'll CD into this video project. Uh, just kind of using the uh, bootstrap so that I could add this nav bar in. Of course, you could also just do this with like a line of text I'm now realizing, but I guess it's more interesting if you have an actual nav bar. So we'll just we'll just go from there. Okay, so to get started, let's go ahead and let's add device. We'll add simple form. And I think that's it for the gems. Let me just check, it is not. We also need to add uh, flipper-cloud and flipper-active underscore record. So pretty simple stuff. Devices for the user account. Simple form is to make the login form not super cringe. Flipper cloud is used for this and uh, flipper uh, active record is used to store the stuff locally. Uh, oops, I have to do a bundle add. Sorry about that. Uh, because of course you don't want to always have to grab this from the cloud. So I think this allows you to have like your own local copy in case something goes wrong. Uh, but okay, so now that we have that, we can come over to our, uh, our flipper page here and we can go to the getting started section. So right here we can see the gems we have to add. Uh, we then need to run a rails g flipper colon active record command. So we'll do that real quick. Rails g flipper colon active record. That will add our migrations for us. We then need to do our db migrate, of course. And at this point, we now need to add in our uh, adapter stuff. So I'm going to censor this out a bit, but hopefully this works for you. If you go over to uh, in your environment, you can go to tokens. So you have your features over here. You have your tokens right here. Uh, you're going to have an adapter with a code right here. You can uh, click the eyeball to see it, copy it, and then we need to add this into our application. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, Visual Studio Code with a code dot command, and then I'll come over here. And what we're going to do is a editor equals, and if I hit F11, hopefully you can see this, uh, editor equals quotes with code space hyphen hyphen weight. 
Rails credentials colon edit. This will open this up in VS Code and wait for us to close the window uh, once we're done in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna paste in our code right here and we'll just say this is the flipper and then you can just paste in whatever the code is. It'll look something like this maybe. Uh, I'm gonna paste my own in and then once you're done, you can just close this and then this window should close itself. And then you can see uh, credentials edit uh, ran and the file was encrypted and saved. Now you're gonna come down here and you're going to copy this line, the require flipper slash cloud with the configure block. Come over here and come into our config, our initializers, right click new file, call this flipper.rb and then paste this in. Let me hit control plus so you can read this. You're gonna have your token here. Uh, I'm gonna be using my own. So the way that we can do this is uh, because we name this flipper, you can actually just do a rails.application.credentials.flipper in our token block, and that'll give us access to this. So now we are done with the uh, setup there. We can now go ahead and deal with our device users real quick. Pretty simple stuff. We're gonna do a rails g device colon install command. That'll install device. We can then do a rails g device user command. That'll add our user accounts. We can then do a rails g simple underscore form colon install space dash dash bootstrap to install simple form with bootstrap. And because Rails uh, has our device views now, you can do a Rails G device views to generate our views file, which will then have those simple form uh, styles added to it. So that's pretty neat as well. Okay, so that takes care of a lot of that setup. Let's go ahead and let's create a home page. So say Rails G controller pages home, just like that. And now we need to do, well, in my case, I need to do this. I have to do an install for Foreman because of how my environment's set up. And now I can do a bin slash dev to start the server because we're using ES build uh, and bootstrap. We can go over to localhost port 3000 slash pages slash home. It'll tell us to run our pending migrations. We can do that. And now we're on the homepage. Okay, so let's cruise through some of the basic setup here. We're gonna come into app, views, layouts, application.html.erb. I'm gonna do a dot container dot mt dash five. Wrap the yield tag in that to move everything over. Next, we're going to copy this from my other page so I don't have to do this every time. Uh, we're going to do a current user check. We'll do that right here. And then if we are the current user, we are going to render a partial for the layouts slash navbar. This is just because uh, right now we're gonna pretend we have a, a navbar and then we're going to take the feature away and pretend to like roll it out or whatever. So we render the partial or the layouts navbar. And then on the home page over here in the pages home, uh, we need to do a check for the current user. It's gonna be a pretty simple check. Uh, we just check if current user, we then print out the email and then make a logout button. Because this is rail seven, we have to include the data turbo method delete. Uh, otherwise the logout won't work. And then we can do the login unless they change this, but I think this is still required. Uh, but there we go. We can now do this and come over here and refresh. We'll have the login button. Nav bar is still not there because we're not logged in, but it's gonna break until we come into layouts, right click new file, underscore navbar.html.erb. And in here, we can just go over to Google, search for a bootstrap five nav bar from the bootstrap page. We can grab the first nav bar, paste it in over here. We're not gonna customize it or anything. It's just so we have something to look at. We can now click on login. We'll come over to our terminal, stop the server, and then come into our DB and our seeds file. And in our seeds file, we want to create three different user accounts. So we're gonna create a dnetexample.com, a john at doe.com, and a jane at doe.com account. For each one, I use the email as the password. It's terrible security, but it makes it really easy to test because you just copy the email and paste it in twice to log in. We can then do a rails db colon seed command to add that into our database. We can do a bin slash dev again to log in. Now I can log into dean at example.com with uh, the same thing as the password. So then we can click login. There we go. Uh, and now let's come into our config and our routes.rb and set the root of the application to be the pages controller and the home action, just like that. Refresh and that should take us to the home page. cool. So now if I come over to my incognito window and I log in, as john at doe.com and I copy that and then I log in. We can now see that's working and now I have to come over to my third page and log in as jane at doe.com. There we go. Okay, so now we have all, all of these working. They all have this nav bar. Let's now try to limit who has access to it. What we can do is we can come over to the add a feature button. 
I'll name this, I don't know, like video nav bar for the sake of this tutorial. I'll copy this and we'll just say uh, adds a nav bar. And then you can tag it however you'd like. I'll click create feature. We now have a video nav bar. So what I'm gonna do is leave this fully disabled. We'll come over here and we'll see how we can roll something out. To do this, we can come into our application.html.erb file. And in here we can, uh, right after this say, if flipper dot enabled question mark for the nav bar comma, and then the current underscore user, because we want to check if the current user has access to the nav bar. So just by doing this, nothing's going to happen. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons for this. One of the issues with this is uh, the, the nav bar or the video nav bar. Sorry, I got to change this to the video nav bar. Uh, one of the reasons for this is hopefully if I do this, there we go. Uh, we don't have access to it because the current user, first of all, isn't really set up for this. So we have to come into our models and our user.rb. And in here, we need to give this a flipper identifier, which we can do by including flipper colon colon identifier. So that's step one. Uh, but you'll see that no one has access to it at all. And that's because by default, it starts as disabled. So we can create like uh, actors or we can, or we can add actors, which is just going to be like a user comma one, if you have that. Uh, so the first user ID in here, uh, whenever you set this up is going to have access to uh, the, the flipper feature or whatever. Um, in my case, I'm going to do it differently because uh, I'd like to do it for a set number of people. So we're going to come in here and we're going to enable, enable this first of all for hundred percent of actors. And we can then come over here and refresh. Uh, oops, I do need to stop the server and start it again. Sorry about that. Uh, and then we can come over here and refresh, hopefully. There we go. So now we have a nav bar there, a nav bar there, and a nav bar there. And then come over here and crank this down to a number like 66. Click save. There we go. And now if we come over here and we refresh on some of these pages, hopefully we'll get a situation where uh, it doesn't give it to everyone. I might need to mess around with these numbers a little bit more. Okay, after quite a bit of refreshing, I have set it to 51%. And I think I got one where my randomly chosen users distributes uh, in a way that we can actually test this. So we can see here, Dean no longer has access. So the user with an ID of one can't see the nav bar. The users with an ID of three and two can see it, however. So we can see that this feature is working just with this one little check right here to see if this is enabled. Yeah, that's gonna give you access to the ability to roll out features like this. At this point, it's pretty much up to you to figure out how you wanna use this. Uh, the documentation's pretty good here for um, adding in a bunch of different stuff like your, your users and you can give them groups or whatever. To give them groups, what you wanna do is uh, first you need to add the role. So we've done like devise user roles on the, on the channel before quite a few times. Uh, you just have to register the, the role by finding out which actor responds to the admin and which actor uh, has the admin question mark on it. So you're checking if it, if it is an admin with this. So if the user is an admin and the user responds to admin question mark, which means they have this method, which means you have something uh, in your user that's like a enum for the role where it's like a uh, I don't know, normal user and a admin. At this point, this gives you access to the ability to do uh, current underscore user dot admin question mark, right? So if the user responds to admin question mark, which they will, if you have this enum and you've generated the migration for it by giving it like a integer or whatever, uh, at that point, it'll register it as a admin user. And then any user that is an admin uh, will get added to a group called admin, uh, which you can then use in your uh, thing over here by going to the add a group and you can say like add the admin group or whatever if you want to. And you can see right here, I already have one created, but you can click add group. So it's enabled for that group and it's enabled for 51% of actors, etc. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much all I wanted to talk about. It's pretty cool. And uh, I do like that they have a self-hosted version. So maybe I'll cover that in a future video if you guys are interested. Uh, but for now, that's gonna do it for me. Uh, hopefully you have fun enabling all of your features and stuff. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video.